Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. And in this video, I want to show you how you can essentially um, support multiple screen sizes with your Android app, because that really is a question I get a lot. And you can see here, I have a tablet emulator and a normal phone emulator, and these layouts look differently. So on the tablet emulator, we have four images, and on the phone emulator, we only have those three images here. And also here on this device, they are just a little bit larger. And if we also rotate this tablet here, then you will see that um, there's also an alternative layout for this landscape mode. So then these layouts are not stacked vertically. Instead, they are stacked um, horizontally. So all those are things I want to show you in this video with the help of this layout. Of course, um, this is just a random layout here. This tutorial is not about how to how to build this specific layout. Um, but with this layout, I can just show you pretty well um, which concepts you actually need to know to support multiple screen sizes. So let's jump right into it here. Um, new Android Studio project, just empty. We don't need any dependencies. Uh, but I will quickly copy over my four images here. You can, of course, get these um, from the GitHub repository in this video's description. So I will just paste these here in my drawable folder. You can see here they are, Kermit 1 to Kermit 4. And then we will jump into our layout, our activity main XML. So the first principle when it comes to building responsive UIs is you need to use constraint layout. If there's only one thing you learn from this video, then it is use constraint layout wherever possible. And it's actually always possible. Sometimes you need more layouts um, within a constraint layout, but usually you can build your UI just with a single constraint layout. The reason you should use constraint layout, um, there are actually multiple reasons. On the one hand, um, just to have a flat layout hierarchy, so you don't have many nested layouts. Um, which will just need more process processing power and which will make your app less performant. But on the other hand, in terms of responsiveness, constraint layout just comes with a lot of tools um, that help you to define relative sizes. So that is the second point I want to talk about here. Um, you should avoid hard coding layout sizes. So you should avoid um, giving a view width of 200 dp or so um, because it will have width of 200 dp on every device. But not on every device, this will look good. And constraint layout just helps you really well with that to just um, have these constraints to define these relative sizes and you don't need to hard code them. But I will show you how this works here in this video. So let's first remove this text view here um, and then go into our code tab. Um, we can actually split this here. I don't think you will see this really well because I will zoom a little bit here. Um, but let's open this constraint layout here. Um, essentially, what I want is, you can see on this phone, I want to have three images in, in square format and evenly distributed. So this, this space here is equal to this space to this space and so on. And on our tablet here, we want to have four images instead. So let's actually first define a layout with four images, because then it's easier to just remove one of those. So we define an imagery here, um, the layout width and the layout height. Now it becomes interesting. So we essentially want this image to be squared. But if you take a look here at our images, those are actually not perfect squares. So to actually make these squares, we need to crop them. There's a scale type um, here for image views. We can use center crop, which is very commonly used, and that will just make our image square. So let's try that. Wrap content, wrap content, and scale type center crop. Or well, let's actually change the width to match parent for now. And we close this here, or actually we need to set the image resource, of course. So app colon source compat. Um, and we set it to Kermit 1. And then you will see here in our design tab, okay, it fills the whole width of our screen because of match parent. 
um, but because of wrap content in height, it will also fill our whole height of our screen. So what we actually want here, um, so in our emulator, you can see these are actually much smaller. So these don't fill the whole width of our screen, um, but still they're still squared. So how can we do that? And many of you would probably just give these now a fixed amount of dp in width and height. And that's not how you should do it. So that's of course a way how you can make them squared, but this will make them have the same size on every device. Um, so we want to prevent that, this hard coding. And luckily with constraint layout, we can easily prevent this. So what we want to do is, and we'll split this again, um, we want to set the layout width and height to 0 dp, which will just um, expand as much as the constraints are wide. And then we want to give this an attribute called constraint dimension ratio. So here we can define a ratio um, that basically defines the proportions of our image. So we can say it's 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, <laughs> like this. Um, so that means the width will be as wide as the height is high, which is obviously a square. Right now we don't see anything in layout preview because both width and height are set to 0dp and we haven't set any constraints yet. So here we come to another very important concept of constraint layout, which are guidelines, because they help us to um, set the guideline to a specific percentage of the screen. So let's switch to our design tab here and set these guidelines. So two guidelines, one here and one here. So we can set the image view right in between those two guidelines. And we can easily do this by right clicking um, helpers and add vertical guideline. You can see there's our first guideline and we can do this again at another vertical guideline. We go back to our um, code tab actually. You can see here our two guidelines. We want to remove this constraint guide begin attribute because we want to set this to a specific percentage. So we set the constraint percentage, so constraint guide percent to um, 0 0.35. So now you can see here in layout preview, this guideline is always now at 35% um, of our screen and we can constrain views to the guideline. And we will do the same here for our other guideline. And for this, we want to set this to 0.35. Instead, we will set this to 0.65. This will just give us these two guidelines and now we can constrain our image view in between those two guidelines. And because this image view expands its whole width, this will also mean that it will expand more width on bigger screens. So, and this will also expand the, the height of this image view because we set this dimension ratio. So that just means, okay, take a look at the width of this image view and just make it as high as it is wide. So let's just set the constraints here, the constraint start to start off. Here we set our it to our first guideline. Then the constraint end to end off to our first our second guideline of course this time. And as you can see in our layer preview, now it's exactly in between our two guidelines. And that's what we want. And then we can also constrain the top to the parent top. So we set our constraints and the error is gone. So then that's actually it for our image. So we can now copy this and paste it three more times and just change this to Kermit 2, Kermit 3 and Kermit 4. Then we click on this second image view, constrain it to the bottom of the first one Click on the third image view, constrain it to the bottom of this one. Oops, that is the margin. Um, take the constraint, drag it right here. And this image view and constrain it to the very bottom one. And as you can see, 
there are our four image views. Right now they are directly on top of each other. We want to evenly spread them. And whenever we want to do this with constraint layout, we need chains. So what we want to do is we want to go to our design tab again. We want to constrain the last element to the bottom. And then we simply drag all over these images. So they are all selected. We right click and go to chains and we want to create a vertical chain. And then you can see that will evenly spread them in height or in vertical order. So now we build a responsive layout without hard coding anything. So all values we used here are relative values. So either percentage or just in, in terms of constraints. And that is really the most important thing you need to consider when building layouts. But of course, um, there are some screens that are a little bit wider, some screens that are a little bit more narrow, some screens um, that are just really big, like tablet screens. And you often want your layouts to look differently on different screens. So as I said before, we have our phone screen here that should just have three of these images. And we have our tablet screen that should have all four. So we can essentially accomplish this with so-called qualifiers. So what are qualifiers? You can see if we go to this little icon here, click on create other, then we can just create a variation for this layout. And you can see these are all qualifiers here, available qualifiers. For example, we have the country code. We could click on this button here and just define a country code. And for this specific country, the layout will look differently. Of course, for the country, this usually doesn't make that much sense. But for example, we have the smallest screen width. And that is very interesting for us here. So what is the smallest screen width? Well, that is just the smallest side of our display. So if we, oops, um, if we take a look here at our emulator, then this is the smallest screen width. So even if we rotate the device, this will stay the smallest screen width. So what we could do now is, depending on the smallest screen width of our devices, we just say, okay, this smallest screen width should have this layout, and this smallest screen width should have another layout. And in general, the smallest screen width, um, so that is always in DP. So there are some typical values to choose for this. Um, there are 320 DP for just the typical phone screen. There are 480 DP for like a little bit larger phone screens. I think it's about five inch displays. Then we have 600 DP for smaller tablets, I think seven inch tablets. And we have 720 DP for just normal size or larger tablets of 10 inch, I think. So let's actually do this. We um, click on the small screen width, click on this button, and now we can enter a value. So I will choose 720 here. And this will create an additional layout file for all devices that have a smaller screen width of at least 720 dp. So we can click OK. And you can see it just copies this layout we had before. And for these devices with smaller screen width larger than 720 dp, we actually want this layout to look like this. So these are just our tablets. But we actually want it to look differently on phones, so on smaller screens. What we want to do now is we want to go back to our activity main layout. We want to create another variation. So again on this icon, create other, again small screen width, and this time we choose 320 dp. So this will then just be the layout for all phones. We click OK, and this time we don't want to have these four images. Instead, let's simply remove the last one here, press delete. This will be dragged to the top because the, the bottom constraint here is set to nothing. We can simply drag it down, and then they will still be spread evenly. And when we now launch our app here on the one hand on our tablet, and on the other hand on our phone, and then take a look here. You can see that is exactly what we want here on this phone. We have our three images and on our tablet we have our four images. So if you take a look in this layout folder, 
you can see now we have a whole directory for our activity main layout. And in it, we can see three files. And for smallest width 320 dp, we have this layout with three images. And for smallest width 720 dp, we have this layout with four images. So that is essentially how you can use different layouts for different screens. But you might also want to use a different layout for landscape mode. Um, that is actually pretty common. And you can also do this with these qualifiers. So let's again go to this icon, click on create other. And we also want to set the smaller screen width to 720 dp again. So we also only change the landscape mode now for the tablet screens. Now we can add more qualifiers. So we so we can choose one qualifier, but if we want, we can choose as many as we like here. And you can see here's also orientation. Let's choose this one. And we want to create a layout for a landscape mode. So now this layout variation will only apply to tablets in landscape mode. Click OK. And here is our layout. And this is, of course, not how we want it to look like in landscape mode. Instead, we want these images to be arranged horizontally. And for this, we actually just need to um, change the guidelines. So we first want to un unconstrain these Im images in horizontal order. So I press Control and click on this constraint for all of these images. Then we go to the Code tab, scroll down to our guidelines, and set this orientation to horizontal here as well. Then we can go back to the Design tab. You can see now we have these guidelines in horizontal direction. And then we can reconstrain these images. And when that is done, we again need to set the chain for these um, four images. We select all of those and right click, create horizontal chain. And that's it. Now we created a landscape mode variation for tablet screens. So if we now relaunch this on both our phone and our tablet and take a look here. On the one hand, our phone, if we rotate this, you will see this still looks ugly because we created the, the layout only for tablets. So let's rotate it back and rotate our tablet screen. And now you can see the new layout is applied. So now these images are in horizontal order. So now you've learned how you can build fully responsive layouts. Um, that is really everything you need to know in theory. Now it's up to you if you're ready to practice this in one of your projects. If you're looking for more advanced Android courses, then check out the first link in this video's description, which will lead you to my website. Um, and there you will find premium courses about Android development. And with the discount code philip 15 you will get 15% off of all my courses. Thank you for watching this far. I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.